the research on what creates outstanding companies, what really creates outstanding organizations, is unequivocally clear that having a philosophy of long-term thinking is a prerequisite for doing anything good. This is, shows up in the data, the research has been done, this is really good. And, and I was like, well, how can that be right? That the very thing that we know for sure is what's needed to build great companies is antithetical to the economic environment that we're taking companies into. You know, all of us in Silicon Valley, we're all trying to build public companies. We're all trying to sell our companies to public companies. We're all trying to make ourselves subject to this short-term pressure, which makes our companies less valuable, which means investors lose money. And I was like, I thought we were, I thought this was a capitalist system. I thought we're for-profit companies. So how can this be right? So it never made sense to me. And I finally was like, aha. It just, I was literally on an airplane and it came to me and it said, what we need is a way for those companies which actually are long-term and those investors that are actually long-term to come together for mutual benefit. And we'll just build our own market with our own social contract that says we're going to actually run things for long term and we don't need to be activists about it. We don't need to get, we don't need to run for president or anything. Just, it's a for-profit company. These are all for-profit companies. Well, we will actually make more money if companies perform better, which I did not really expect to be controversial. It seemed like, I thought I was making a QED, like straightforward deduction from the first principles of like what is capitalism to whatever. I didn't even know what a stock exchange was. See, I told you all about stock. I didn't know one thing about stock exchanges. I was just sitting, I was literally sitting there and being like, you know what I need? From first principles, I need an institution that can regulate the behavior of <laughs> investors and managers at the same time. So you invented a stock exchange on that airplane? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I know, we should make a stock exchange. And I just wrote it, and I'm just, I was sitting there with my computer, with my manuscript right here, I'll have it open. I'll just throw it in here and see what happens. Why not? I, if you had told me that day that this would be a controversial idea to anybody, I would have been shocked. And that was it. That was the idea. And, you know... Pretty easy idea to say. Took three paragraphs in the book to write. Uh, it's not as easy of an idea to build. So I spent years just, I can't even describe this to you. Like this is the first thing in my life where I feel like I didn't, my subjective experience is I did not have this idea. My life was really good before I had this idea. I did, <laughs> I did not need this idea. Honestly, my experience with this idea had me. It came to me this time, I wrote it in the thing and I was like, good, my work here is done. I wrote it, I'm an author now, not an entrepreneur. I wrote it in the book. I did my responsibility. I put it out into the world and now this problem will solve itself uh, and I can go on with my life. And this is just one of these ideas that would not leave me alone. It would like keep me up at night. It would bother me all the time as I would go around in the world and as the book became a phenomenon and I got to go work with companies. I mean, you name an order of magnitude of companies from two founders in a garage up to the world's biggest multinationals and every order of magnitude in between I've had the chance to work with companies of that size. And I can now, I can pretty much win a bingo contest where you give me like sector or industry of the company and size. And I'll be like, oh yeah, here's an example. Oh yeah, here's an example. And now you can cross that with corporate function. I can tell you a story about people in that industry at that size and that function, how they were grappling with, with lean startup. So I got this really wide education. And yet everywhere you go, this is the problem people complain to you about. You can't, if you can't avoid it. And once you've had this idea, I just like, oh, why is this such a bad idea? I don't understand. And so I started to talk to people about it. And I, I spent years just asking everyone I knew, you know, any, you know any investors? You know anybody that knows anything about Wall Street? What is Wall Street? <laughs> How do you go there? <laughs> is it a place? Is it a, thing? What, what, is it a state of mind? What is it? How do I learn more about it? And I asked VCs, do, who, you know any public market people? And people, I made, made intros and I would have these conversations. I'd be like, hi, I'm this kid from Silicon Valley and I've got this idea. Can you tell me all the reasons why it's terrible? And they'd be like, no problem. <laughs> First, it violates the efficient market hypothesis. Second, you know, brokers will never go for it. Third, it's antisocial and it will lead to communism. Fourth, it will, <laughs> I'm, you name it, I swear to God, I have heard it over the years. And what was so, so and I was just, I was like delighted. I was like, great, one day someone will sit me down and explain to me why this is a bad idea and it will leave me alone. And the problem was people's reasons for why it was a bad idea made no sense. It wasn't that, like, they were not persuasive because they were almost all variations of like, kid, I am making so much money from things the way it is exactly right now, could you please go away and leave me alone? <laughs> People wouldn't say it exactly that way, but I started to learn. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Nobody can answer the question for me. Why, like, I was like, oh, I had very simple questions. Why do we report quarterly? Why are companies allowed to give guidance? I don't understand. Meanwhile, I'm working with companies every day where at the first sign of trouble, if the guidance is off, if the quarter's not going well, the very first thing they do is cancel the innovation projects. You all lived through this, you know what I'm talking about? We literally eat the seed corn as like a best practice. <laughs> why? So if you ask me, why do you do this? It doesn't make sense, like I, and no one could answer these questions. It wasn't like they had a really good answer and that just was like, I was like, I wanna make it a little bit better. It's like people would be like, 
I don't know. It's just how it is. It's just gravity, right? It's just, this is just how it is. And so I started to ask people, well, how do you build a new stock exchange? I have this idea for a new stock exchange. I'd like to build a new one. And when you, I told you that look people get on your face, try this one. <laughs> uh, it's like you're saying, I'd like to make a new moon. <laughs> and it's like, it's a weird question. Cause like, hey, we already have one. It's fine. We don't need another one, but also that's not a human thing to do. <laughs> you don't make a moon. It's just, it's in the sky. It's a thing. And people have this image, the beautiful marble building with the bull. We're going to have another bull. <laughs> what, what animal is yours going to have? I mean, I've been, I've heard it all. So eventually I got to a moment where I met a securities lawyer. And the other problem is most people who are experts in this topic make a lot of money from the status quo, so they won't help you. But I finally found someone who was like at the perfect borderline of just inside enough to know the answers to my questions, but not making so much money that he was not invested in reform. And I said to him, how do you make a new stock exchange? He said, oh, it's not that hard. <laughs> that was, I was like, oh, really? Is that? You just fill out form one. <laughs> and I did, you know, in a cartoon where you do the double take where you're like, I'm sorry, I can't, what? And he's like, yeah, it's, for, it's called, you need to follow a form one application. It's literally form one. And, and, and I was like, I, I was just, I couldn't understand him. He's like, listen, you understand how government forms are all numbered? Uh-huh. This is SEC form number 001. <laughs> the application to establish a national securities exchange. It's a freaking form. And I was just like, you're kidding me. Now he's like, listen, it's 200 pages long. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the most important thing about the, I, I, we were talking about how I need to have a legal memo written to explain why I wanted to go talk to the SEC about it. He's like, when you go meet the SEC, the most important thing about your legal memo is, anyone want to guess? I was like, oh, the structure of my argument, uh, the <laughs> precedent that I can cite in the whatever. And I, I, I'm a very earnest, good student, right? And he's like, no, it's whose letterhead it will be lit, written on. What lawyer will write this letter for you? I was like, who cares? It's, it's on the American way. He's like, kid, listen. <laughs> There's only three lawyers who are really qualified for this. It needs to be on one of their letterhead. And I'm like, oh, man. And then I was like, wait, can I meet are these people I can meet? He's like, oh, sure, yeah, <laughs> I'll introduce you. You know, it was, just, it was like it, all these problems seem like totally intractable. And then, and this just has been almost 10 years now of like one foot in front of the other, one step, one little experiment. And so it's like, yeah, you fill out the form. It has a lot of parts. You have to hire a bunch of people. You have to raise a lot of money. You have to have the right lobbyists. You have to have the right lawyers. You have to learn all this jargon and this impenetrable whatever. You have to learn how Washington, D.C. actually works. Uh, but okay. It was like each step didn't seem that hard. And I was like, well, I'll just take this one step and see what happens. And I, and I was expecting for most of the first five years of this, that I would take a few steps, I would eventually meet the one person, that I'd finally meet the man behind the curtain, and he'd be like, oh, kid, you made it behind the curtain. Let me now explain to you why this can never work. And it will leave you alone. And I could go back to my very nice life that I was having before. Because two moons would screw up gravity, first Right, of it's all. like, really, we'd yeah. cause the problem with the tides, and people would die, and I mean, people would act like, oh, my God, this thing. 